Before we access social graph data, we can check on a user's login status. We can find out if a user is logged into Facebook and if they have authorized our app. We do that with the get login status method of the API. So let's take a look. When you use the Facebook API, you'll be working with different types of methods. The ones that you're going to use more often are the core methods, which are right here. They are FB init, which handles the loading of the Facebook API. We've already used that one. The FB.API, which handles access to the social data or social graph. Finally, there's the FB.UI, which lets you access parts of the Facebook user interface, like dialogues. The next section is what we're interested in, the authorization methods. To check to see if a user is logged in, we use the FB.login status method. So let's click on that. The example right here gives you three options. And it's really nicely commented, so you can read that if you want to. But essentially, we want to find out if the user is logged into Facebook and has authorized our app. If they're logged into Facebook but haven't authorized our app, we want to be able to do something then. Finally, if the user is not even logged into Facebook, we also want to know about that. Now remember that users can access your app outside of Facebook because, frankly, it's just a simple web page. So you need to figure out what your authorization strategy is going to be. Do you want users to go to your website and see that page outside of Facebook? Or do you want them to only have access within Facebook? And that's what this function is about. So let's take a look at how we would implement that. First, I'm going to go to BB Edit and pull up Transmit right here. And I have some versions of the get login status method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my JavaScript file over here. And just double click on that. So if you remember, we loaded the JavaScript SDK asynchronously here. And once this SDK is loaded, then it's going to execute this FB async init function. And we want to make sure that we initialize the JavaScript API here. And we can add some additional stuff right here. This is still part of the function. So this is going to happen only after the SDK has successfully loaded. So we're going to go back into code snippets and grab the first version of our function. So here we're going to check to see if a user is logged into Facebook and authorized our app. So I'm just going to grab that, go back here, and paste that code right there. We're finding out if the user is actually logged in. So this get login function gets a response from the Facebook API that tells us if a user is connected. If the user is connected, then it gives us a user ID as well as an access token. An access token is a security measure that allows us to communicate with certain parts of the Facebook API. Unfortunately, we haven't really discussed how to allow a user to have access to our app. So this is not going to do anything. So if I save this, go back into my browser and take a look at the app. This is going to load, but it's really not going to do anything because we haven't added this app to this user. So let me go back into BB Edit, and I'm going to get the next version of the code, which lets us do something if the user is logged into Facebook but hasn't authorized the app. So if the response status is not authorized, the user is obviously in Facebook because it's getting some sort of response, but hasn't authorized our app. So I'm going to copy that and click right here and replace this function. I'm going to delete this part right here and give that some space. So if the user is not authorized but is in Facebook, we could do something. So let's test that out by adding a dialog box. Let me just do an alert here. And I'll just put in user is in Facebook but not your app. So I'll save that. And I'm going to go back into Facebook and reload this app. And we get this dialog box because the user is in Facebook but hasn't given access to our app. I'm going to click OK. Now sometimes you may want to debug something without producing an alert. So for that, you can use something called console.log and treat it just like an alert. Save it. And I'll go back into Safari. And I'll refresh. Now it's not going to give us the dialog box, but if we go to the develop menu and select show web inspector and then click on console, we'll see that it gives us a message. Sometimes we want to be able to push silent messages onto this console, and that's a really, really good way of doing it. And it's a great way of debugging. If you don't have the develop menu, make sure you go to the Safari menu, preferences, and under the advanced tab, turn on show develop menu and menu bar. 
this is in different places and different browsers, but just about every browser has some sort of developer tools. So let's go back into bbedit and into our code snippets and grab the last version of our function here. So it looks like I have a couple of duplicated lines. So let me just get rid of this one. So here I find out if the user's logged in. If they're logged in, then I can do something right here. This is if they're logged in and authorized our app. Next, if they're logged into Facebook but not our app, then we could do something else here, which we've done in our sample app. So if the user is not logged into Facebook but has accessed our app through our website, then we could do something. And one of the things that we could do is just redirect the user to log into Facebook. So you don't necessarily have to do this, but if you want to make sure that users are logged into Facebook before using your app, you want to maybe send them back to log in to Facebook by changing the window location of the browser. So let's see how that would work. So I'm going to grab this, go back into my code here, and I'll replace this. And so now I'm going to refresh this page. Let me go ahead and close the console here. You're not going to see anything because I'm obviously logged into Facebook. So let's go to another browser. And I have another user right here. Let's try going to our app right now and see what happens. So you can see this user is logged in and it's getting to the app just fine. So now I'm going to go over here and just log him out. And I'm going to try to go to the app again. So it goes to the app for just a second, and then it redirects the user to the Facebook login page. Now, if somebody tries to access your app just on your server, it should do the exact same thing. So you can see there that it also kicked you back to the Facebook page because the only way to see that page or that app is by logging into Facebook first. So like I said, you really have to decide what your authorization strategy is going to be. Do you want people to access the page that is on your server? Whether or not they're logged in, uh, you can give special privileges or show different things to people that are both logged into Facebook and your app. And uh, it's just something that you have to decide yourself.